Kidney failure can happen to anyone, anytime. But whilst this is an illness that will always require treatment, you can, if you manage your condition effectively, continue to live a full life. In this DVD, you'll find out more about end-stage renal failure, the diet, the medication and treatment choices you have available to you. We'll also highlight those places where you can find additional information on some key topics. Alongside advice from medical professionals, we'll introduce you to patients who will explain the pros and cons of living with their choice of dialysis treatment. We've also collected a number of practical tips, things we wish we had known from patients who have lived with kidney failure, which they've found have made life easier. Above all, whatever stage you're at in your treatment, it's important you understand your condition and develop an effective partnership with your medical team. This hasn't just been my experience, other patients have found the same. It is a lifelong thing. As I've proved myself, I'm now on dialysis for the second time. Um, but you have got to realise it isn't the end of the world and that life can go on as normal while you're on dialysis. There's always room for, for improvement. There's, you know, you should never stop. You should always look to move forward and look to the future. Just think positive about it all. It's not the end of the world. It's the beginning of a new life for you. Mentally and physically, you know, it's all up here and all down there. Yes, I suffer from renal failure, but I've made that into a positive rather than a negative. With home hemodialysis, it takes one of your bedrooms up. The amount of stock, you know, the machine it's itself, it's, it's quite big. The machine automatically goes through its function checks, its safety checks. If there's anything it needs to tell me that an engineer needs to come out. You know, I do this, what, three times a week, you know, and every, every time it's always the same. Once I'm actually connected to the machine, I'm on this machine for four hours. You know, um, watch a bit of DVD, you know, an Asian film lasts three hours, that's three hours gone quickly. Once you're dialysing at home, you've got to have that family member with you at all times, just in case your blood pressure drops or something happens to you or you need assistance whilst on the machine. That person needs to be there to know, to understand what is wrong with you um, and what to do at that situation. <laughs> if you're choosing HD, make sure you talk early to your consultant about where your fistula is going to be. There are different sites that can be used and it's important to get the one that suits you best. If you're a PD patient and you plan to visit your friends and family regularly, you can have your supplies delivered directly to their homes. It just saves you having to load your car up every time. Do you drive to a unit for HD? If so, ask them whether they can give you a permit for a parking space. It'll save you some money and is a lot more convenient. If you're a PD patient, squashing all those supply boxes might become a real pain. You could talk to your bin men, they might be happy to take them away for you. When you're on HD, your fistula is your best friend, so look after it. Take your blood pressure on your other arm and make sure you don't carry heavy shopping bags, particularly the nasty plastic ones, on the fistula arm. If you're a PD patient and you're planning to take a flight, make sure you have your peritonitis antibiotics with you in your hand luggage. I was on CAPD and then HD before I was lucky enough to have a transplant from my husband Keith. It was a bit of an emotional roller coaster for the whole family, but it was fantastic when we found that Keith was a good transplant match. I really didn't think of it as, as too much of a hurdle to jump over really. It was, it was a natural thing to, to, to decide to do. And, um, and so we, we moved forward and we, we planned it. And they were honest with us, they didn't want to keep anything from us. But it became part, so much part of our life that we didn't feel we needed to talk about it that much. A couple of times they did come and require more detailed conversation on what would be happening to Daddy as well and how would it work. Oh, and would they still get their Christmas presents? Because it was Christmas time. <laughs> we're both IT people and in some respects we just looked at it as a project and, uh, and we worked our way through from step to step. Regular blood tests give us all the information we need to know about how well our bodies are working. Test results show us the levels of some key minerals and other substances in our blood which can really impact on our health and well-being. Understanding your results, what are known as your numbers, 
and how diet and treatment can affect them is really important. Getting those numbers right will mean that patients will either feel better uh, or they are likely to live longer. The reason that it's quite useful for most people to understand how, how the numbers work is it does allow them to have a bit of control over their lives and their lifestyle and to make decisions about what they want to do, whether they want to stick to the diet, whether they want to take the tablets and make those decisions in an informed way so they know the balance of the risks and the benefits. Your phosphate. Top London chef Lawrence Keogh has had a successful transplant for six years now but before that he was on CAPD. For Lawrence, getting the diet right was about taking control and feeling good about food again. Get the list of what you can have and start focusing on them and getting the balance right, you know. Um, but uh, definitely sort of look ahead, look forward to sort of things and try and at least one or two days a week make something special that you are going to focus on and enjoy so you know you're going to have it. When that time comes around, you've got a treat because all these sort of treats are taken away from you so it's important that you've got something to look forward to. Michael Maher is still happily moving up the corporate ladder with an international company producing aluminium. If the employers understand your treatment, understand um, kidney failure, they will be able to support you. They have never restricted my responsibility. I've always taken ownership of anything I've done and I'm one of the more senior persons on site now. The biggest challenge was fitting in the schedule of dialysis, especially hemodialysis, and the inconvenience of having to do that three times a week. So in the end we came to an agreement that I start a bit later on the Tuesday, Thursdays. I don't think we'll ever be able to grow a kidney in a test tube, but it does look very likely that stem cells either from a donor or possibly from your own body, may be able to modify and make better kidney diseases that you've already got. I think the picture over the next 10, 20, 30 years is very good in kidney disease. However, we will still be using dialysis, we will still be doing transplants, and we will still, at the end of that time, be wanting to improve them further.